Good evening, everyone. Today I have with me a very, very passionate academic. He has so much of diverse knowledge that it's a privilege to learn so many things from him whenever we follow his posts on social media. And he has done PhD in computer science from Cornell. And uh, before that, he did his bachelor's from Indian Institute of Technology back in India. So to me, he's, he's a encyclopedia of information and knowledge. And as I said, it's a privilege learning from him. So today I will be discussing with him uh, about the state of medical science and what can we do to move towards a better future. I will be asking questions on your behalf. And uh, please go ahead and drop in your comments in the comments box. So let me proceed. Abhishek, I just want to start with this straightforward question. On March 11, 2020, uh, WHO announced the start of a pandemic. And this month, they said that the pandemic emergency, urgency of this pandemic is uh, is over. And uh, it's, let's say, let's put it this way, it's no more a pandemic. So what really happened in these two, three years? And what do you think actually triggered this pandemic? Like uh, the the two theories, like um, whether yes. it was a uh, originated at the yeah. uh, well, originated at, at at the wet market or whether it was in, in a lab, and yes. I've not seen any any concrete like any conclusive evidence on, on either side, and it, it's not unusual in, in medicine and in health. There there isn't usually very like solid very includes the evidence of anything like there is always we have to deal with uncertainty but like um yeah the there isn't very conclusive evidence any and on any side and uh, but yet the authorities they are very confident and they, they claim things with, with with full confidence so that that's unfortunate um so that's about the origin and what ha happened was was a culmination of a lot of things that were going wrong way before the pandemic. So um, there, there was a lot of corruption in um, medical science. And it, was, it has been going on for 20, 30 years. Uh, that kind of a revolving door between the, um, the top health authorities like FDA, CDC, which is a great stuff, um, and, and, and the pharma companies. So there is a, lo a lot of corruption which pollutes the scientific literature. They um, very, very often they lie by omission, they spin results to conclude things that the data did not show. Some, and sometimes there is also evidence of outright fraud, they just lie. They say they said that their experiments did one thing, but they did something else. Um, yes. Then there is like a, a very like flawed foundations like um, of medical science itself, like Probably it came after like physics. In physics, we had very good theories. With those theories, we could like go to Moon and Mars and, and so on. Like we did a lot of very good things with physics, but in theories in medicine, like we we understand very little of the uh, medical the theories. Like our theories are very incomplete, so we're not good at predicting things, and we put a lot of our faith on medical theories that turned out to be wrong. So uh, that misled us a, a, a lot, and even in, in even in COVID, and uh, there are some good techniques like randomized controlled trials where you can do empirically uh, test things and em empirically prove causality. But they are they are not usually done. And um, the the worst thing is like centralization of power, yes. which um, which like th there's just one a few agencies like literally like C C CDC. Head like if you if you corrupt the CDC like everybody blindly follows the whole world ultimately blindly follows FDA and CDC and 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 like many of them are compelled to follow like even doctors who know better they have, they if they if they do, they if they don't follow the FDA they will lose their license they will uh, go to jail so there is one central authority that everybody is obligated to follow and and that that's that's always a, a recipe for disaster whenever you have centralized power eventually corruption will reach there, the roots of corruption are, are huge and eventually corruption reaches there and and um uh which, and then when once you once you've corrupted the centralized power and and if it has so much power then your job is done like you you can rule the world so uh, all, all of that happened and so what uh, we see like specific examples like 
COVID, uh, the mRNA vaccines, they, they were not as safe as they were told. They, they were promoted and a lot, lot of people, uh, a lot of young men suffered a lot because of that. Um, we pushed things like masking of kids that in schools that yeah, was, yeah. Was, there was never good evidence for that and, and probably probably we had more harm in the development of mm-hmm. kids from that than, than benefit. Um, so a lot, a, lot, a lot of bad things happened. So it's, uh, like rich, the rich became richer, the poor became poor. We, we shut down in, in the US we shut down small small businesses. Uh, but we kept the large ones like Amazon or Walmart. We the, those were open, and the small mom and pop stores they 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 lost their life. Uh, the, the the business they created over the lifetime, many of them they they had to shut down forever. It was a disaster. That's so important point. Uh, the reason I asked this question, Abhishek, is because uh, Elon Musk had uh, tweeted two years back. Uh, something nasty is going on because he uh, got himself conducted four tests, same day, same hospital, same nurses, and two times he tested positive for COVID and two times negative. So he mm-hmm. said something, maybe something nasty is going on. What do you think was going on? Do you believe in this RT-PCR technique, this reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction? Because Karimulis is not alive. So we don't know if he were to be alive today, he would have really uh, given us his consent because that man was very, very controversial and flamboyant and brilliant, of course, but he had his own views on AIDS and uh, ozone and so many things. So, do you personally believe in this RT-PCR technique, considering that viral load is a very complicated subject? Yeah, there's a general general problem of uh, of surrogates in medicine. Like, ultimately, what our goal is to save lives mm-hmm. and it's hard to measure whether we are saving lives so what we do instead is measure like surrogates, like whether your cholesterol level is fine or whether your blood glucose level is fine. But that's like optimizing those things are not the goal. And this, the same problem is here. Like our goal is to prevent transmission. And it's there's no no easy way to measure that. So so what they do is measure surrogates like like RT PCR. And so the question is, and then there are many parameters like the CT value, like how many times to amplify. And is there any solid evidence that if if there is um, RT PCR positive for some CT well, CT threshold, what what does what does it mean in terms of transmission? Like that empirical validation has has not been done to my to the best of my, my knowledge. So without uh, without doing that, um, it's just. Um, there, there, can, there, can, there can be questions, especially about like if you amplify it too much, whether that's giving you something meaningful is a question. Uh, uh, that, that said, like if um, um, if maybe if the threshold is lower, maybe it has some significance. I'm not saying that it has no significance. It's just that uh, the, the, there needs to be more empirical validation of right. of these things. And and most important, like like yeah, even if uh, you are positive um, but you have no symptoms, mm-hmm. then are you really likely to spread it? Like uh, I've not seen good data uh, yeah. showing the value of a PCR positive without any symptoms. Like how much likely? Like a good experiment to evaluate this uh, was probably never done. At least not that I've seen. So that should have been done. My next question is about the commoditization that took place once this news broke out. Because uh, in 2011, Ralph Stillman, he got Nobel Prize for uh, identity cells. So uh, if we are using too much of these uh, sanitizers all the time, uh, I think, uh, I don't know much about it. I just want to hear your opinion. It's, it's not advisable, especially for kids, if they just go on playing with their natural immunity and destroying their identity cells. And also the fact that we are telling people in 2020, we were telling people to uh, wash your hands all the time. But there are so many places on earth where we don't have water. So uh, this looked like a very strange uh, situation. It was like a conundrum, like if you don't have bread, it kicks. So do you do you think uh, this use of sanitizers and uh, washing hands all the time, they were even remotely a solution uh, 
it, it it did help but do you think it was that solution which we we are we were trying to adopt in 2020 or 2021 did it really help masks and sanitizers for yeah. for masks there is there is uh, not like perfect data but but all the data there is shows that um, like even if they helped they mm -hmm. helped uh, only a little bit like the thing is like you can do trials yeah. and the larger your trial is Yes. Uh, the more the smaller effect you can detect mm -hmm. uh, and just I, I wanted to briefly just uh, caveat my knowledge I'm a computer scientist by training but but uh, yet I, I think I'm 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 um, I feel like eligible to comment on medical issues because I think the principles of science are the same no matter which field you are in like in every field of science you have theories and you have to do experiments to validate them so and I, I'm qualified enough I know, I know, like, yeah, I know enough math uh, as a computer yeah. scientist to 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 judge whether um, the experiment show what be, is being claimed. So with that out of the way, yeah, um, yes, with mass, we know um, if there was an effect, it it was quite low. And uh, with uh, with sanitizers, um, they they probably help help a little. But the question is, what, what are the harms? And yeah. like uh, 10 years ago, people used a lot of um, sanitizers with stuff like triclosan, which, which is like banned. And so we, we, we never, so the, so the main question is, are the, are the like side effects, are the, Ill, are the adverse effects worth the benefits? And, and so the, that, that's my main concern with, um, with sanitizers, especially in children. And uh, these sanitizers can also have like other, other compounds. Like many of these, uh, many of like soaps, uh, like and uh, personal care products, they they tend to have like these things called phthalates and phthalates, which which are known to like dis disrupt the endocrine system. And there are these animal trials showing that they cause uh, reproductive uh, harm, like. Um, uh, like, like uh, for example, I think uh, like the semen count in 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 boys, uh, they can cause issues with with those things. So, so we should have uh, we need to have more caution. Like we need to not just think about um, like like not getting COVID. That should not be the the end goal. The end goal should be like optimizing the health span of the whole society, meaning like how long will people live and and how, like how long they live healthy, uh, that so-called health span. So that should always be the goal. We should not like have a very narrow focus on just avoiding one specific degree, which which is often like which, for kids, it wasn't harmful anyway. So maybe kids who had, who lived with uh, like vulnerable grandparents, maybe they, maybe they could have been more careful, but, but other kids, uh, with other kids, we could have taken a less stringent approach and and better respected the possibility of harms, and uh, until we have good data about about harms. Yeah, and we could have also used like um, more um, like uh, more natural, so called natural. Should I say natural or or ones which have stood the test of time, like simple soaps that we have been using for. Thousands of uh, like at least hundreds of years. Uh, that is probably better than some novel formula with tetrosan and parabens and all those petrochemical products. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we should have uh, gone more with things products that have stood the test of time. Um, but like in these days, you get go to an airport and they would spray some some random chemical into your into your hands and you don't even know what it is and you, you are often obligated to take it. So that that's probably not the right way to do it. Right. And uh, uh, do you believe now in hindsight that we could have handled this entire uh, pandemic thing better? Because uh, I remember probably we were talking on Orkut. The last time there was one such pandemic, what, whatever you call it, in 29, swine flu or something. So Dr. Ab Osterhoff, and he's in some kind of controversy. Uh, so because of this, because... Uh, uh, microbiologist, I think, Eklin Camp. He 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 accused him of of uh, trying to exaggerate the pandemic uh, scares. And he called him a scaremonger. So uh, and he he uh, Oscar Hoss later replied that I was just referring to the volume of you know the, the the all those combinations that could probably go wrong. 
thankfully it did not go wrong to that extent in 20 uh, 2009 uh, if you want to call this swine flu pandemic so uh, i think this time did we panic a little bit extra or uh, as compared to 2009 because this time the entire world was in uh, it is in, uh, like uh, vulnerable and uh, i don't know who is in the basket who to blame and what went wrong but uh, as an expert because i i consider you as an expert we all have learned a lot from you we follow your posts so uh, do you think we could have handled this entire situation better than what we did our performance is key what's your opinion yeah i i think like uh, in the beginning like in march 2020 uh, i think it was legitimate to be to be scared like i i i myself was scared i i i, I was wearing masks i knew very well that i had not looked at the literature of masks and they may be not effective but but the risk and i was, my mom was living with me at the time and she's like 60s and she, she's in 60s so yeah. so just to protect her i i, I thought uh, it's it's good like even without looking at the data i thought like it's probably not going to kill me if i just wear the mask for a few yeah. weeks and i i did that i i avoided going out uh, i did all of those things but uh, it shouldn't have continued for so long like mm. once the data started coming in like that that mostly elderly are, are, at, are at risk we should uh, like I, I personally i am a very libertarian at heart so from a principles approach from a principled approach I would never like, like I need. I would never like uh, trample on the liberties of other people. I, I would never like force people home. Like I would just. I would always. And people were scared. Most people were scared at that time. So so I, I think like forcing people to do things that that was that I think in my opinion it, it should never have been done. But if somebody does it for the first few weeks, I would not mind so much. But but doing it for two years that was. A problem and and the and the, like slowly slowly like it has been more and more very clear to me like i actually it was clear to me even in april 2020 that the end goal of all this was to sell vaccines it was uh, I, I yeah i i don't uh, yeah there's just no way like there are just so many things that can be explained only by this like uh, for example um like like they were always saying like once you get the vaccine you can take off your mask like they, they were like even though we know that uh let's take the an example it was like when the vaccine started rolling out like in 2000 and the beginning of 2021 it was very clear that like an unvaccinated child mm. is much less at, at risk from covid than a vaccinated adult yet we did not let children out uh, because they were unvaccinated and we gave full freedom to like the adults so mm -hmm. like everything and, and there were many other things like vitamin d levels many many things yes. uh, like vitamin d, d levels had like a 10x correlation with your risk in in all, almost all the time yet like people and and like same like obesity there were so many factors that affect urban risk but but we only single handedly we only uh, ac accepted one factor that was vaccinated like if you're vaccinated you you have full freedom if you're not vaccinated you cannot do anything and like and then like children for any other vaccine, if if had if it had this level of harms to young children, it would have been like blood. I think I I I'm hundred percent sure that if I write a paper mm -hmm. about a drug and and show the same evidence of harms uh, for young children as as the mRNA COVID vaccines, and if I just don't tell that it's a vaccine, I just say it's an XYZ drug. If I just make it blind. Mm -hmm. Any medical expert would look at this paper and say that this would have been banned. This would have been banned, but because of the biases um, that is that is throughout the system, they they still kept promoting it. So so like to me like there's just no there's just so many uh, the way they like completely the way we they treated early treatment like ivermectin like ivermectin may be not effective. Yes. Is, uh, to to me like there, there are some very good trials coming out of India and and and. Uh, so-called third world countries. Um, yeah. um, and and I, I argued with many experts in the US about this and they never had good I, good claims about why they don't like trials for India. Like one, one scientist just told me that uh, that they don't trust, that India doesn't have infrastructure to, to do trials, so we don't trust the trials from India. 
And why, why not? Like there, we, there is a big history of uh, of pharma fraud in the U.S. So why should you trust? Why do you trust U.S. trials? Like at least the people in India had no financial conflict of interest in in showing that ivermectin works with dirt cheap. So at least, and in the trials that they were done, the trials that they trust, they were done by pharma companies. They were done by the companies that who who had millions, billions to gain from the results. So so this there there was comp- all these by so so like. They, anything about and this is the only solution was vaccines. There was no other solution. Like you, you can. There is no treatment, and the treatments they approved, everybody knew that it was ineffective. Like they approved remdesivir, and everybody knew that uh, it's not very effective. So, so I think this is not just the one. There is a general pattern where pharma has a product it wants to sell, and then they would like every other thing, every other effective treatment they they would. Um, even possibly effective but very safe treatment, they would like very vociferously they would downplay it, and the only thing that would they would allow are things that are that everybody knows is not very effective. So so people would go for vaccines anyway. So I think it's a general pattern. So it, it's it's very clear that that uh, overall this whole machine was trying to sell the COVID vaccines, and that's why they panicked and. And even the, the doctors who were honest, yeah. they, they did not have enough critical thinking to understand what's going on and, and push back. Uh, so, 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 so that's probably the, uh, more of a diagnosis of the problem. Uh, so what, we, what I would have done differently coming back to the main question is, is yeah, no lockdowns after, after, uh, few, after like two, uh, yeah, after maybe a few weeks. But I would have started like, uh, the, the most important thing I would have done is like randomization. So like I would have uh, done more, uh, very much like uh, all these drugs like ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine that have a safety record of like 50, 60 years. I would have, I would have done like huge randomized trials to see if they are effective. Even masks, I would not have done mask mandate. Instead, what I would have done is randomized trials. Like you, you take like let's say in in the U.S. there are like thousand counties and you randomly pick five hundred counties and you ask them to wear masks and five hundred counties you don't ask them. To wear masks, so so that would have been a very solid experiment to to judge whether things are working or not. So so what what instead what they did was they they just assumed that things work, and and mandated them. So anything you have before you mandate, you must generate good quality evidence to mandate stuff. So at least if you want to do it, you have to do it in a randomized way. Like you don't give the vaccine to everybody. You just randomly roll out the vaccine to the people who are interested and. In. And keep half in the control group and see what are the effects before, like immediately rolling out to everybody. So, like good doing good science, I think that's that's the biggest opportunity that was missed. Like we could have done much better science. Like there are no randomized trials right right now that will tell you uh, what are the risk of COVID vaccines. The, the only randomized trials that was done that then they were stopped at two months. Like at two months, they gave everybody the vaccine. So the only good quality data we have for uh, the Side effects of vaccines are, are two months long. We don't have anything about long, anything reliable about long-term data. So, so doing good science, fewer mandates, and and not 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 too long, and more respect of people's liberties. Uh, I think that that's the main things I would have done differently. And about the use of steroids, metrols, uh, not testing. Uh, I will maintain and uh, SCQ and all this thing. Uh, do you think these uh, the scale at which we have used steroids? Uh, I don't know about US, but in Asia, I can tell you that uh, there was heavy reliance because doctors were they were also in panic because uh, when I used to discuss with doctors, the first reaction was that they they used to say, "Don't believe in naysayers. Don't believe in uh, those people, anti vaxxers what they call." I don't know what this means. Uh, and then you, they used to say that we are also facing problem. So I don't know how how this situation was for medical. I was volunteering in the first wave. In the second, of course, I could not. But I saw real panic among doctors. They are also human beings. They were overloaded with works. Uh, but do you think too many use of steroids, to what extent it has helped us? Because there was there were there were complications. Uh, Black, black, what you say? 
uh, i don't know the black word. fungus yeah i think black so. fungus yeah. Yeah. we we have black a fungus. native word for this i won't use it but yeah black fungus and all this uh, complications so do you think yeah. the use of heavy steroids uh was required or we panicked that like there is no role for vitamin d absolutely when you yourself shared one important paper uh i think last year where vitamin yeah. d was to be 98% yeah 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 so uh yeah the, the vitamin d like yeah like there was already good evidence for Right, right. I mean, like there, there is still some like yeah. Just because like before going the into the pandemic, there was good evidence that vitamin C helps with respiratory viruses. Like there is good quality data for, like not not perfect, but good quality data for like flu, like influenza flu. So, so I mean, in theory, yes, it could happen that there is vitamin D helps for flu, but it, but it makes COVID worse. In theory, it's possible. It it was very unlikely, and at least like once the early observational data started coming along, at that time, like. Like by by mid two thousand twenty, there was I think government should have started pushing vitamin D to everybody and going out. Instead, they were like preventing people from going out. That was a disaster. But um, yeah, on coming back to steroids, um, there there was a randomized trial showing that steroids helped some people. So they didn't they didn't look at the long term outcomes, right? So they they looked up they looked up like only like survival for like. To a few weeks, so, and also there, it was probably conducted somewhere in the west. So situations are different in India, so you can't you can't really apply that to to India. But but I would give them because there was that randomized trial. I think any any uh, in absence of good better data, I think it was a rational decision to use steroids, uh, especially that um, there was there was not much was known or what what else what else to do so in, in in the absence of data i think it was it was a fair decision they could have done some randomized trials in india but but the thing is also like when somebody is dying you do that that's not the time to do science like right. probably you 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 would probably just want to have a best guess of what what works uh, at the same time i think later later on I think some some doctors they they have a better idea of what what exactly happens like when when exactly steroids ha- work. So I think some doctors at least their theories again theories are often wrong in biology and we need to evaluate with empir- uh, with uh, empirical evidence with experiments. But the theory says that like in the early phase when when the virus is multiplying a lot at that time like steroids probably harm like at that time you want your immune system to be fighting and in the later stages, uh, m- maybe when the immune system is like harming your own body, like at, at that time, maybe steroids can help uh, slow down. And maybe in some certain subpopulations, uh, steroids can be more harmful than better. So, so, so it's like on average, the trial showed that on average, in some populations, steroids help. But if you look into more specifics, maybe like steroids are. Are good at certain times and not are bad at certain other times during the course of the infection, and like based on your your own genetics and lifestyle factors, maybe it's good for some people and bad for some people. So that that hasn't been figured that that wasn't figured out yet so well. So, um, but so yeah, uh, so but I would still like I, I would not think that anybody giving story had like any bad fate. Um, they were probably doing, uh, and they they were doing things with good intentions, and they were also doing things that were rational, given given the trial that that showed that steroids have at least have some benefits. One very important point you mentioned uh, earlier about centralization of power that was something that they have been done away with because that's the crux of the issue. And uh, I mm-hmm. think uh, when we were. Uh, Suddenly, when we were faced with this problem, uh, the only people who you rely normally on is the medical, uh, the doctors, the authorities, and they in turn look up to to their seniors who are sitting somewhere in other part of the world, maybe. So, uh, do you think calling it a global pandemic, global problem, is a- any medical uh, outbreak or pandemic calling it global? Uh, is it against the very spirit of evolution of human beings? Because 
what you are saying is about us us has a very different lifestyle and probably people are living in air conditioned chambers all the time they have a higher happiness happiness index i don't know uh, probably they are definitely richer they are developed nations contrast this with uh, someone who is uh, sitting uh, in a in a very remote corner in africa in a very uh, poor slum in africa uh, so how can they both dine in the same kitchen because these people they don't have money to dine so what i'm trying to say is using the same vaccines the same parameters for treatment uh, to treat someone who is sitting in the white house uh, and to treat uh, someone who is uh, sitting in the slums of africa or in asia because i have seen the problem in dharavi i was there so do you think this is something where we where we fail to address the problem because human evolution is about adaptation to our localized environments so how can this pandemic when we are not allowed to travel uh, we have visa constraints and all that how can if human beings are not allowed to travel how can pandemics travel all around the world uh, disrupting the whole life so i'm just asking uh, do you personally believe that uh, the problems in 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 alaska or or uh detroit is different from the problems in, in in africa or in the slums of asia or or do you think uh, medical science that we are enough uh we have enough sufficient data to call it a global pandemic and the medicines that were used were fair what's your opinion on that? yeah i th- i think like the probably likely that the virus that spread everywhere was most mostly the same the virus like i mean the air, air travel was never completely stopped I mean, there was always travel going on they, they stopped the commercial side but there was still this one day virus right and all all that so that, and that's enough for it to spread the virus okay. was uh, easy to spread but the, the, you have a point like the solutions uh, need to be adapted like uh, because of the cultural differences and lifestyle differences and and so many differences the, the, the optimal solution in the us is not necessarily the optimal solution in india and 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 there are many good doctors in india who is doing who were doing actually in my opinion much better than the us like they were uh, trying new trials they were they were, they were even trying like ivermectin for prevention in 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 some odisha in in some aims hospital in india and it showed some uh, it was actually qu- quite a good st- uh, observation study showing that uh, ivermectin prevented um covid so the yeah so, so like to some extent it was going on but then again the same problem the centralization of power uh, they they all wanted to say, the only solution must be the vaccines like even in the us like monoclonal antibodies they have there are very good trials showing that showing that monoclonal antibodies are effective yet when the governor of florida tried to deploy them at large scale uh, biden tried to like get in the way and tried to like stop him from doing that it's very clear like for for ivermectin you can you can argue that you don't trust the data of india but for monoclonal antibodies there was good evidence of, of the us in good good quality trials so why didn't you trust that so it was very clear that the the authorities were just trying to push this these mrna specifically mrna vaccines not even the adeno vaccines like the mrna vaccine at this point has more harm than the adeno virus vaccine and adeno vaccines are banned in the us but mrna is not it's very clear that Oh, against it? all the data they are trying to yeah the adeno vaccines are banned and so it's very clear that against all the data they're trying to push just one solution and that is the mrna vaccines um and and so even in india there were brave doctors trying to do other things that was probably more effective but then the media and and the indian audience who thinks that only americans know science they stopped those doctors and they made fun of those doctors who were doing the good thing 